Hello, this is my quick, up-close and in-person look at the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle set for 2018. With over 6,000 pieces, it's the second most complex LEGO set to date. And though it measures around 30 inches or 75 centimeters wide, it's designed to work with nano figs, one static piece each and significantly smaller than a minifig. There are 24 uniquely printed nanofigs in this set, representing readily recognizable faculty, antagonists, and students, though notably omitting Hagrid. And there are also some officially unnamed students from each of the four houses to help bring more life to the different scenes. For the sake of collectability, the set does also come with four actual minifigs, plus a stand, representing the four original founders of Hogwarts. Left to right, these are Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Salazar Slytherin, and Rowena Ravenclaw. First year nanofig students get five little boats with wakes to travel across the lake where they land at the boathouse, climb the winding stairs up the hill, and file into the entrance courtyard. Here we get to one of the most iconic locations in the film series, the Great Hall. This has plenty of brick-built detailing and texturing around the outside, five nano-sized Dementors flying around, beautiful stained glass effect windows, and textured cliffside terrain with a handful of trees down below. Around the back, the Great Hall is fully open. There's a wall panel full of Umbridge's decrees and the banners of each of the four houses fly overhead above four rows of tables. The elevated faculty table is also present with some additional sticker detail behind. Beneath all this is a representation of the Chamber of Secrets, complete with a basilisk and a single one-by-one -one black tile for Tom Riddle's diary. The entire castle is open on the back, and I'm just going to continue through each of the main structures, alternating back to front and front to back. So here's the underground entrance to the Chamber of Secrets, and above that is the Great Staircase Tower. This has large stickered panels representing many of the moving pictures and two flights of marble stairs that can be rotated around a bit to help you see behind them. Further up is a bathroom that's mostly moaning myrtles, but also has a panel on the left side representing the Prefect's bathroom from Goblet of Fire. Next is the Griffin statue that tops the elevating stairs to Dumbledore's office. This is a pretty tiny space that mostly relies on stickers for details like Fox, the Sword of Gryffindor, and the Sorting Hat. And that's about it for this part of the structure, but around the front of the roof spire they suggest attaching this small side build, a Hungarian horntail dragon, again from Goblet of Fire. For its size, this is a pretty complex build and has a lot of movable joints for posing. The castle is actually built in two sections, and these pull apart right here to make it all easier to move. This also reveals a hidden devil's snare room that's otherwise unseen and inaccessible. This next section has some connecting structure with the stone bridge tower and bridge itself, some more terrain in the middle, and the wide viaduct causeway up front. Again, there's a lot more detail around the reverse side, including Dolores Umbridge's pink office and Remus Lupin's defense against the dark arts classroom that I misidentified in my long-form review. At ground level is the corridor from Chamber of Secrets with the writing on the wall, and there's also a sticker representing the entry to the Room of Requirement. Down below is the room full of flying keys where most of the detail is represented by stickers, and next to that is the chessboard room, where most of the detail is represented by actual physical pieces. Very impressive for its size. Even the stone bridge has interior detail in the terrain beneath it, this showing the mirror of Erised with a lone transparent red stud on the ground representing the Philosopher's or Sorcerer's Stone. And that brings us to the last major section of the castle and my personal favorite with the viaduct entrance and its corresponding towers and terrain. This reuses the stained glass window technique from the Great Hall, and the interior plan is relatively open. On the right side is the Gryffindor common room with red furniture and a large fireplace, and on the left is a section of library that squeezes in as much brick-built detail as possible, with chairs, stacks of books, and a single row of shelving. I know I already mentioned the windows, but I wanted to show them to you one more time before we go underground. So here's Professor Snape's potions classroom, packed with desks and stools and transparent containers, and to its left is the Room of Requirement, with miniature representations of the Vanishing Cabinet, Goblet of Fire, and all sorts of miscellany. 
Hagrid's hut is given its own separate build with a very high part count for its tiny size, and that's supposed to be Aragog there. And there's a whomping willow made with articulating branches that can be spun around, flexed and swayed, plus possibly the world's smallest flying forward Anglia. And that's it for this set. It has a ton of fine detail, but with so many pieces being so small, the finished product isn't nearly as massive as the parts count would suggest. And Potter fans will immediately recognize that only some of the major lakeside structures of Hogwarts are depicted here. Realistically, it's more like half a castle. For a more detailed, in-depth narrated tour through this set, check out my full review on the Jangbricks channel. For more short-form summaries like this, consider subscribing right here if you like. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.